As a working single parent of three children who privately rents my home, I'd like to know each leader's thoughts on the lack of affordable social housing throughout Britain and how their party means to tackle this housing crisis. Ed Miliband. Well, Fiona, who asked the question, in, in England, under this government, we're building fewer homes than at any time since the 1920s, and that's got to change. Because I meet so many people around this country who say that they just can't afford to get on the housing ladder, uh, they can't afford to rent, and it is a massive, massive problem. So we've got to have more social housing, we've got to have more private housing to buy, we've got to reform the way the private rental market works uh, in, the, in housing as well. And, and that's what our plan does. A plan to build 200,000 homes a year by 2020, to make housing the top priority for new capital investment, and to do something that hasn't been done in this country for a very long time, to stand up to the large developers who are actually stopping housing being built. So we'll give councils use it or lose it powers to say uh, either developers build on the land or councils can buy that land off them and actually make sure that housing is built. So it's a plan to build homes for people right across uh, England. Leanne Wood. Well, Plaid Cymru would oppose the Tories' plans to extend the right to buy because we believe that there should be more social housing and not less. And tackling rising homelessness will not be addressed by allowing more people to become private home owners. There does need to be investment in housing, and the Prime Minister's announcement suggests that there's an additional £5 billion to be spent on housing. We would like councils to build more council housing and for the profits to be reinvested back in that housing for more people. We would also like to see uh, rent caps in order to make housing for rent more affordable for people in all communities. And we'd like to double the uh, council tax on holiday homes. Okay. Uh, Nigel Farage. Well, like all markets, housing is about demand and supply. Uh, one of the big problems we've got is we have to build a new house every seven minutes in this country just to cope with current levels of migration. So a rapidly rising population has put massive massive pressure on house building in Britain. Reducing immigration helps, but it doesn't solve the problem. There is a chronic lack of housing. What UKIP proposes is a brownfield building boom. Let's establish a brownfield register. Let's help people with decontamination grants to build on that land. Let's offer incentives such as no stamp duty on properties that are built on brownfield sites. By doing those things, by using empty government buildings, and there are plenty of them, we could produce 200,000 new affordable homes in this country every single year. But it's something we're going to have to start doing very quickly. And we should make sure that all new social housing is for UK nationals only. Natalie Bennett. Well, Fiona, I'm going to come back to your situation and your struggle, because it's the struggle of so many people in Britain. The fact is, private landlords last year got £9.3 billion from housing benefit, and 38 per cent of people living in private rental accommodation, that rent is being paid in part or full by that housing benefit. We've got a huge problem that houses have become primarily financial assets and only secondarily places for people to live. That's why the Green Party wants to build 500,000 homes for social rent, genuinely affordable homes over the course of this parliament. Maybe one of them could be yours. We also want to put a cap on private landlords rising the rent, raising the rent. Five-year security of tenure, a cap that your rent goes up by no more than inflation. We really need to turn this around and turn homes into somewhere that's secure, affordable, that you're not six months and you'll throw it out and you have to look for a new place and have a whole new huge deposit to pay. Okay. Thank you very much. N Nicola Sturgeon. Well, Fiona, I think housing is possibly one of the biggest issues in this election campaign. In Scotland, we have a target of 30,000 affordable houses by 2016. We're on track to meet that. We're also considering rent caps to help people in the private rented sector. But I think we need to go much, much further. SNP MPs in the House of Commons would vote for a target of 100,000 affordable homes a year across the UK. But we also need to make sure if we're building new homes for rent, we protect them for people who need to rent. I, I think the Tory idea to extend the right to buy to housing association 
properties is one of the worst ideas I've ever heard. In Scotland, in Scotland, we've abolished the right to buy, not because we're against home ownership. We help people into home ownership through help to buy and shared equity, but because it's a policy that's had its day, we need to build more houses for rent, and then we need to protect them for those who can't buy and need to rent. So, thank you. So, as I'm listening to you, in Scotland and Wales, this idea of people in housing association accommodation being able to buy won't run. It won't happen if there's a Tory government return that does it for England. Is that right, Leon? Well, we've suspended the right to buy. When Plaid Cymru was in government uh, in the National Assembly for Wales, we passed legislation to enable local authorities to suspend the right to buy in areas of high housing pressure. Because of the point that Nicola just outlined, the, the, we need to protect the numbers of housing uh, available for social rent. So certainly if Plaid Cymru was in government in the National Assembly for Wales, we would not go ahead with this policy. It is one of the worst policies that you can think of if you're thinking about reducing homelessness. This will increase levels of homelessness and that's just not on. Okay. Ed, 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 well, well, David, we've supported the right to buy, but the problem with the Conservative plan is that they've got absolutely no idea where the £4 billion that they're supposed to be paying for it from is coming from. And that means that we're going to lead to fewer houses available for rent in our country. That's why the plan doesn't work. And look, any plan based on right to buy has got to mean there are going to be more houses, not less. That has got to be a fundamental principle given the problems we face. And look, the answer is we need to invest in housing in, our, in the future. That's why I say that we make capital investment the priority for the future. But you're, you're not in principle opposed we're not to housing principle association. Of, we're not in principle opposed to right to buy. to buy. But as I say, I don't think the Tory plan works because there's no money for it. And all that is going to mean is the social housing stock being, being watered down and even fewer homes to rent. And what about the suggestion that came uh, of uh, capping uh, rents well, me, in line with inflation? Well, let me deal with that directly, because I think we're going to do something which should have been done a long time ago, probably by governments of both parties, which is to say that we'll have three-year tenancies, not one-year tenancies in the private rented sector, because so many young people, so many families are facing dreadful insecurity, and within those three years, we will cap the rents because I think it makes sense that people can have some stability when it comes to private rented housing. And one other thing, we will also ban letting agents from charging tenants fees. Because at the moment, letting agents charge fees to tenants and to landlords right. is not fair, and lots and lots of people lose out in our country as a result. N Nigel Farage. Uh, there just seems to be a total lack of comprehension on this panel, um, and indeed amongst this audience, which is a remarkable audience, even, even, by, even by the left-wing standards of the BBC. I mean, this lot's pretty left-wing. Oh, uh, hang, hang on a second. Um, but very hang, interesting. On, hang on a second. But, but when you no, talk Nigel, about let housing, me just say one thing. Yeah. This is an audience that yeah. has been carefully chosen, not very by the carefully. BBC, not by the BBC, but yes. by an independent polling organisation to represent the balance between all parties. It's never a great no, very good. Uh, uh, so, very good. Very good. Well, no, I'm, I'm, anyway, carry on. I think it's, I think it's very interesting. It's, 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 very, interesting. it's never you, a great you, idea you to You cannot the discuss. Audience, Nigel, in you my You cannot my, discuss. In my, in my no, no, the real audience are sitting at home, actually. The... You cannot no, discuss. Let, let, no, hang on. No, 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 let him fine. have his say. No, no, that's fine. No, um, go on. It, remarkable. We are talking about a market, folks. I know none of you have ever worked in business, but we're talking about a market. And markets are about demand and supply. And I just wonder, I'm curious, could I get any recognition from any of you that the demand side of this equation is that a rapidly rising population due to open-door immigration started by Ed Miliband's Labour Party in the late 1990s has directly contributed towards the housing crisis. Is there any flicker of recognition from any of you? Please, we have, one of you, have a go, have, please. We have a housing shortage across this country. But you know what, Nigel Farage, uh, it's not caused by immigrants. <laughs> In your world, every problem is <laughs> caused <laughs> by immigrants. We need, to, we, need to, we need to build more houses. We have a situation where, certainly the Tory plans are, uh, Ed's may be slightly different, but the Tory plans are to spend a fraction building new houses 
of what is spent every year on housing benefit. It's the shortage of houses that drives up rent. We need to build more houses, substantially more houses, and then we need to protect them for the people who can't buy their own home and need to rent. Now, you know, Nigel, you're obviously on a uh, setting out to win friends and influence people tonight, but if we can get away, if we can get away in this debate from the idea that every problem in this country is caused by immigrants. You know, immigrants from the European Union into this country make a net contribution to our country. So if we can maybe just put the bogeyman to one side, we can actually yeah. debate these issues for right. real and in substance. Can I just alert I you just, all to the fact, I, you don't know the questions that are coming, I do, and there is a question coming on immigration, so let's perhaps not go in too much depth on that for the moment. Yeah. It's just astonishing. I mean, if, if you cannot you accept, are, yes. if you cannot accept, if you, if you are not worldly enough to accept there is a demand supply side to this equation, then I'm, I, I do uh, accept I'm very sorry. I want to come back. I'm very, very sorry. I accept the demand yeah, I think... and supply. I simply don't accept that all of the demand bit of it is down to immigrants. Well, 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 right, when, 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 when the population goes up, when the population goes up, there is more demand for houses. It's not difficult, really. Natalie Bennett. I am, I am going to leave the immigration debate till later. I, I look forward to that one. But I'm going to take up your beloved market, Nigel. Yeah. You're blaming immigration. But we have a market-led housing policy over the past decade or more. That hasn't delivered homes. That's why we actually need to build homes for social rent, build council homes. That's the kind of solution we need to actually get genuinely affordable homes allowing private landlords to keep stacking up enormous profits. They've actually made 1,400% profit for private landlords since 1996. That's far more than you get from investing in new business, investing in productive parts of our economy. The whole way our housing market has worked has utterly skewed our economy. We need to change that away. We need to get to back to those houses as homes, not financial assets. All right. and so no, the, the, the contention is that it happened under Labour as much as under the Tories. Well, I think Nigel Farage said something very revealing. Uh, can you just pick up what Natalie Bennett said about well, we this happening since we didn't build enough. We didn't build enough homes. We didn't, the last Labour government didn't build enough homes. But, but I think Nigel said something very revealing because he basically said what Mrs Thatcher used to say, you can't buck the market. Well, the problem about the market in housing, Nigel, is it doesn't work. It's not working. It's not working because large developers have a stranglehold on the market and I'm going to do something about it and you're not. It's not working because we're not building enough homes in our country. And therefore, yeah, you're right, it is an issue of demand and supply. There's not enough supply in our country and that's what we've got to do. Developed. And the reality is we haven't done it for a generation and then the next Labour government will get to grips with it because it is one of the biggest priorities our country uh, faces and we are letting down our young people and we are letting down our families. The stranglehold. Um, Nigel Farage, this stranglehold of the big developers, do you agree with him? I don't disagree for, with that for one moment, which is why I want a brownfield revolution. But Ed, if you have net migration into Britain running at 300,000 a year, that's 300,000 more people that need somewhere to live. And the point I'm making is that, I mean, our plans would be with the brownfield revolution for 200,000 homes a year. But even that isn't enough unless we cap the demand side of this equation. Okay, let me respond to that. Can I just yes, yes, there, there's two things I would say to you back, Nigel. Look, the first thing is that your plan in relation to migration, I, I believe we do try, try, need to try and get net migration down. But your plan, this is your plan, is to get out of the European Union. Now, that's your way of doing it. Now, that is a disaster for our country. Because that is a disaster for jobs. That is a disaster for our economy. So I'm not going to go along with your plan. But look, the second thing is this. We can do more for local people when it comes to housing. Take this issue of planning permission. Planning permission is granted locally, and then local people find themselves locked out by buy-to-let landlords from out of the area. I say give councils the powers to set aside homes for local people in an area because planning permission is more likely to be granted and local people can get right. homes to live in. Leanne, would you like to round this off? 
Well, high housing costs are a result of a shortage of social housing, and that has come about partly as a result of Margaret Thatcher's right to buy policy. Not enough housing has been built, and the problem is exacerbated when more people are out of work, because then more people require social housing. And on the question of immigration, when we have more immigrants paying into the tax pot, if they were to be removed, if they were to be removed out of the system, then there would be even less money in the tax pot to build more houses. So I don't accept the argument that uh, immigration is part of the problem. I think in, in some ways it can be part of the solution. Uh, uh